to, to welcome you back, let's say, to this, uh, this parallel session. And we're going to discuss uh, institutional changes again, uh, as in, in the previous session, but uh, some concrete examples from two running projects. Uh, one focusing on institutional changes in organizations, and one focusing on institutional changes on wider uh, territorial uh, uh, areas uh, in ecosystems instead of, of organizations. Um, so the first presentation is going to be done by Lisa Tang from uh, Arcus University, uh, representing the GRACE project, and uh, Lisa, we have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Nikos. And uh, well, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to be here and present the GRACE project. That's that's very nice, and I'm I'm very excited about it. I thought the keynote this morning was was very interesting, and and I think very uh, promising also for the future of the RI field, which is, of course, a little little bit uh, hanging in the wind, uh, given the the status of the SWAFs uh, area. But but I think uh, some interesting discussions have been opened up, and um, and I hope that some of the insights from the Grace project can can sort of uh, feed into that discussion also. So at least that's. Uh, that was the idea uh, behind uh, the way that I'll start presenting it today. So, um, as Nico said, that my name is uh, Lisa Dein. I'm from Aarhus University in Denmark, and I am a part of the Grace Consortium. And uh, in the in the project, we are actually uh, I'm leading two uh, work packages: one on uh, on supporting grounding actions uh, in relation to uh, uh, to open access and science education, uh, and uh, then I'm also uh, leading the work package work package that concerns the evaluation and impact assessment of the project. So some of the things that I say today might have a slight skewedness towards evaluation because that's sort of my my core field and and. Uh, and what I do in this project, but I'll try to, to present the project in its entirety uh, in the best way that I can. So uh, I'll start by introducing sort of the overall aim of, of the GRACE project and how, how we go about achieving this aim. I will uh, go through some of sort of the main concepts because many of these, these SWAFs projects obviously have similar aims, but different approaches. Uh, so I'll try to, to dive into what I think at least is the special uh, aspects of GRACE and, uh, and then I'll give you a few examples of how we're working with that and some initial lessons that we can, that we can already see coming from, uh, from the work being done in the GRACE project. So that's kind of the outline and I think as, as far as I remember, Nikos, I have about 20 minutes, but I'll try to be as brief as I can um, to allow for, for questions and discussions at the end. Um, but the overall aim of the, Grush, of the GRACE project is, uh, as I mentioned, they, they kind of, many of these projects have similar aims, uh, and since we are in a session concerning institutional change, this, this is also, of course, sort of the, the general aim of, of the GRACE project. But, um, of course, we aim to contribute to, to the spreading, but, but in particular, the, the embedding of RRI in, in the European research area. And the way that we uh, aim to do this is to facilitate these sustainable processes of institutional change, but, or as uh, Elmerie Forsberg said in the last session, maybe we are actually closer to organizational change rather than institutional change, but, but that is always something that can be discussed. The way that we try to foster and facilitate these processes in the GRACE project is through, these, uh, through the development of these smart uh, grounding actions and grounding actions I'll, I'll get a little bit closer to in the next uh, slides to see what what that means uh, but another um, another key element in the grace project is to that we're working towards uh, coordinating the selection of grounding actions into these specific eight year long roadmaps towards uh, RRI so in in trying to ensure sustainability and uh, the continual sort of uh, development of RRI in the organizations even beyond the project length. A key aim here is to, to develop these roadmaps uh, that each organization tailors to their own specific needs. And a final sort of aim or approach in the GRACE, pro in the Grace project is to uh, facilitate these processes by providing expert support uh, within the frame of these mutual learning processes that I will also uh, get a little bit uh, deeper into in, um, in the next slides and through a co-creation environment. 
So these are the sort of overall aims of, of the project. And just to sort of follow you through the, the assumptions, because RRI also, as I think was, was sort of one of the underlying uh, elements of the last talk is that RRI can mean uh, different things. It's sort of an approach or a, at least a normative framework that we work in. Uh, but RRI in, in GRACE is, um, is sort of conceptualized as an approach that not only sort of, uh, it's not only aimed at external activities or sort of the interaction between the organization and external actors, but it's also seen as as a, a way to more efficiently cope with current activities inside the organization. So it's something that's conceptualized as, as a core activity in itself. So it of course has to do with research assessment, publications, labor relations, and access to research funds and so on. So this is sort of the, the approach to RRI that, that we employ in the GRACE project. And then we have this core element of the grounding action, which is sort of the, the thing that we're trying to facilitate and to promote and develop in the GRACE project. Uh, and grounding actions are uh, the next step, I think, at least that's how I see it, is the next step uh, from action plans. Action plans have been sort of uh, the focus in many of the SWAPS projects over time. But grounding actions is a way to, to step closer into the organizations and uh, try to get closer to the actual embedment of, of RRI. So these GAs or grounding actions are a coordinated set of activities that the organizations carry out that sort of tries to facilitate this embedment into the organization. Grounding actions are supposed to be very context specific and they're also in this project at least, they're based on a self-assessment of each organization where they have uh, conducted a thorough investigation of their own organization and the needs and capacities that they already have uh, in order to, to ensure or at least try to optimize the possibilities for the grounding action to be successful and sustainable in the, in the long run. Uh, the roadmaps, as I mentioned, is sort of the collection of grounding actions uh, that are supposed to be carried out within an eight year period. And it's an attempt to try to ensure the sustainability of the RRI effort. That was also some, one of the things that was questioned uh, in the talk earlier, is how do you ensure sustainable actions over time, also beyond uh, the scope of the, the individual project. And, and these roadmaps that we're developing in GRACE is an attempt to try to ensure this kind of sustainability by committing to continual action in the organization. This is again tailored on the basis of, of the self-assessment that the organizations carried out and it's linked to the GAs that they're already conducting within uh, the grace period. A final sort of concept or assumption or basis of the grace project that I want to mention is this co-creation uh, uh, and mutual learning uh, element. Uh, grace is funded on, on the idea that to, uh, to optimize or to uh, ensure that the organizations can work with it. We need to support them in their, in their uh, processes. And we're trying to facilitate that through uh, a quite elaborate uh, mutual learning system and, uh, and expert support. So we have a number of expert organizations that are in charge of, of uh, the GAs within the specific keys. And they are uh, tasked with the, with the and supporting the development of the, of the GAs in the individual organizations, but in collaboration, of course, with the individual organization. We also have continual mutual learning sessions where uh, the aim is to sort of facilitate knowledge sharing among both among the implementing organizations, but also from expert organization to implementing organization. And we've also developed a, uh, a monitoring and mentoring scheme to sort of ensure this continual support and this continual both monitoring, of course, that the processes are, are taking place as they should, but also to ensure that mentoring is available even uh, without the implementing organizations needing to ask for it at specific times. And I'll give you an example in a minute of how such a mentoring and monitoring uh, process looks. So in the GRACE project, we have a three-step methodology, which means we have uh, a preparation phase or preparatory phase uh, where this uh, self-assessment 
was, uh, was carried out by the individual organizations, of course, with the support of the expert organizations. This led to a sort of a development of this self-tailored RRI profile. So what are our current status of RRI in the specific organization? Where do we not have uh, activities at the moment? Where would we like to have activities? What, what is the purpose of having activities within this specific field? And this led to the design of the GAs that, that each of the six uh, implementing organizations are working with. And uh, right now, we are in the middle of this development and mutual learning phase, but also the, where the actual implementation of the GAs is, uh, is being carried out. So we're kind of in the middle of things right now. Uh, so we will have no sort of, I don't have any final results to show you today, but I have some reflections in a minute on, on what we can see already from working with these uh, grounding actions. And then we have a final phase that's, that's starting also soon, uh, is the stock taking phase where we'll have an assessment and, and sort of the revision of the roadmaps that, that have already been, been designed. And this is an example of both of what a GA is, what the GAs are. I'm not sure if you can actually see this, but, but, uh, but it's, it's visually quite nice, I think. <laughs> so, so at least that you can see. Uh, but here is an example of, of one of our organizations, one of our implementing organizations working with open access. Uh, this organization has defined three, um, three individual grounding actions within the key of open access. So uh, the first GA you can see at the bottom, uh, the, red, uh, the red line uh, down here where it says GA1, it, it says guidelines and platform. They have the, the, uh, the aim of developing new guidelines and uh, a sustainable platform for open access in their uh, organization. And they have a number of tasks, as you can see on the timeline, that they've defined as steps towards the completion of this grounding action. Uh, on top of this, uh, the, on, on the upper side of the, of the timeline, you can see the monitoring and mentoring meetings that are scheduled, which have a specific purpose, each one. So to talk about the, uh, the tasks that are, that are ongoing and the ones that are coming up and provide the mentoring that uh, the organization need at a specific time. So I'm not gonna go into the, to the specificities of, of each task, but this is just to illustrate how our sort of modus operandi is and in the GRACE project, this is, uh, this is an example of how uh, the organizations work with their GAs and how we try to support them in, in that work. So learning from the GRACE project, I, I thought that instead of, of sort of going through what each organization was doing, I thought it would be uh, more interesting maybe to see, so what can we already learn from, from what we're working with in the GRACE project? And one of the key things that are emerging already is that this co-creation as a route to embedment is a very important uh, aspect and one that seems to be very fruitful and very uh, productive for each organization. In the GRACE project, we try to use co-creation both in the design phase, in the implementation phase, but also in the, the evaluation of uh, the GA implementation. And to this, actually, as a part of the, of the evaluation, but it is also something that can be used in the design phase, is we've developed this reflection tool to assist uh, co-creation in all these different phases of, of uh, the grounding actions and the implementation of it. It has become an integrated part of the mutual learning sessions. We used it uh, at the initial sort of uh, design, in the design phase of the grounding action at the mutual learning session there but it's also a key part of our evaluation approach to try to involve the implementing organization in setting their own success criteria rather than imposing success criteria from, from, uh, from the outside. So the implementing organizations are, key, uh, are a key part of defining what the KPIs will be for each organization and how they will be measured. So this is something I think could be a valuable tool also for other organizations working with, with institutional change. And I've put in a link here and I, I suppose the slides will be available afterwards to, to see, so you can see how this tool uh, can be used. I'll just give you a few examples uh, here. Um, so in, in the sort of the development of the grounding action, the idea is to first uh, to, to sort of take a series of steps rather than, than jump into the work uh, be, before having thought it uh, properly through. And the idea is to first think of what is the big vision 
what do we want to achieve? And this has to be based on a very thorough self-assessment in terms of what, where are we already? And once you've thought of that, you need to think initially and, and very clearly and structured about the success criteria that you think you uh, will apply to this particular GA. So how will we actually know when we've succeeded with this particular action? Uh, another key element to include in, the, in the, the design of a grounding action is also stakeholder inclusion. Who are involved? When should they be involved? And how should they be involved? The implementation of, is, of course, quite central to think about, but the, the important thing here is that it needs to be considered already in the design phase. How will this be implemented? What are the, what are, again, what are the obstacles that we uh, think we will run into and what are the enablers that we, we can use? What are our tools that can help us to overcome these obstacles? So these are the obstacles and the resources. And these are all things that need to be considered at the, the initial phases of a grounding action. And then you can start over. And then this, this reflection tool that we developed in the GRACE project, we have a whole, uh, a whole guide and, and uh, it's a six page document that, that each of the organizations have been given so that they can also have this discussion uh, at home, uh, remotely in their own organization and always keep on track with what they're doing and how uh, if they're if they're doing what they actually decided that they were going to do. So these are examples uh, from from these documents. Um, and some of uh, we have then collected, we're beginning to collect uh, some of the uh, insights from this implementation phase as a part of the evaluation process. And what we're seeing already is that there are some common obstacles that tend to cut across all these different kinds of organizations because we have both uh, research producing and also research funding organizations in, in the GRACE project. But some of the things that, that are cross-cutting are some of those very sort of structural things. So some of the obstacles that we're hearing already is that there is a general resistance or sort of maybe more a lack of motivation from management and from staff. And this is, a, this is something that we're hearing across the board. Um, that another sort of common obstacle has to do with infrastructure that, uh, especially for some of the keys, technical hindrances are actually quite a big concern. It's very difficult to, for instance, to the development of platforms can be, can be difficult to, to overcome. And, and of course, in the current COVID-19 situation, some of these technical hindrances are becoming even more uh, of an issue and time is something that is also uh, across the board, a very important uh, obstacle especially lack of time, that people don't have time to do it, that other uh, stakeholders feel a lack of time to implement it in a proper way and so on. But some of the enablers that are also very important is that they are also where it, where it works. The organizations that say that this is, uh, have had successful processes say that the support from staff is extremely important. So the, so the inverse from, from the lack of motivation that I mentioned before. And also the support and the inspiration from experts and other partners in the GRACE project have also, uh, is also seen as very important for uh, the implementing organization. And then a very important thing, which actually I think uh, touches upon what was mentioned uh, this morning, is that one thing that's also mentioned very, very much is normative drivers. So actually these sort of institutional uh, change processes uh, for instance, in the Horizon Europe, some of the normative pressures to develop some of these things uh, are seen as very important and as something that can be used as leverage within the organizations to actually promote these kinds of change processes. So I think I'm, I'm running uh, to the end of my 20, my 20 minutes probably. So, so this is what I will say. It, it was uh, unfortunately, or, or I'm, I'm sorry, a little bit unstructured, but I thought it was important to, uh, to mention some of the, the insights that we're learning. Uh, from the Great Grace Project, so I hope that that has been uh, of interest. And if there are any questions, you're more than welcome to to ask. So uh, thank you for your attention so far. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lisa. Uh, I think if there are one or two questions, you can take one or two questions now, then have a second presentation, and then have more general questions. Let's say if there, if there is any. Immediate question for Lisa now. You can take one or two and then go to the next one. Anybody who wants to ask us something, just 
just take the mic or, or write in the chat. I just wanted to, to mention that the interesting, uh, interesting aspect of this project, and maybe you can discuss it later, is that we have also one research funding uh, organization implementing uh, institutional changes, let's say, uh, which is uh, it's rather important to, to see the experience there. Uh, yeah, we have a comment from uh, and Marie is saying that uh, I recognize everything you say from the RRI practice, so there are, are common experiences, I guess. Okay, so if there is any, isn't any question right now, we can take the questions for, for Lisa and myself after my presentation. So what I have to do now is I have to share my own screen. Let me see. I think I can... Yes, perfectly, Nikos. Yes, okay. Thank you, Antonia. Thank you again. So uh, I'm going to, 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 represent, to represent here Territoria Project and talk about uh, uh, the first experiences and results uh, from this project, which is an ongoing project. Uh, we're somewhat in the middle right now. Um, and I'm, I'm going to focus on institutional changes at the, at the regional and the ecosystem uh, context rather than an individual uh, organization. Uh, so let's let's say a few things first about the challenges that we are facing. Uh, the broad challenges, I think we discussed that in the morning also, uh, broad trans transitional processes affecting contemporary European societies, the shift to a postmodern society that affects social research and innovation, and the mistrust of society towards science and innovation that we see a lot with uh, I don't know, fake news, uh, mistrust of vaccines, all the things that we're all seeing right now. Um, local and national research institutions uh, in the need to justify their own existence uh, and uh, a competition, let's say, for, uh, for funding and everything, uh, and all the effects of globalization with mobility of research, mobility uh, of uh, funding and, and everything. So this is a new uh, environment, let's say, that we have to uh, to operate within and uh, in the regional level we also have uh, research and innovation planning uh, that has been going on for, ma for many years of course. The latest uh, phase of this is the research and, uh, and innovation smart specialization strategy uh, which has been gone for seven years and now we're preparing for the second phase of this. Uh, there is a critique towards the smart specialization that can be, uh, let's say, uh, can be focused on, on, on three issues. There is a critique by people saying that this is a dialogue of experts. A lot of times society uh, is uh, shut out of this uh, dialogue. It, can, it doesn't have the tools to, to participate in this dialogue. Uh, there is another criticism saying that a lot of times the agenda of the smart specialization process is being hijacked uh, by a certain strong corporation in a, in a given region or a, or a big university or a couple of universities and so on. And uh, a lot of times the lack of participation of society uh, leads to ignoring the future challenges and opportunities as well as possible externalities. So all this, the, the general environment and the specific uh, research and innovation planning uh, as it is done in uh, smart specialization strategy right now uh, leads to the need of a reliable concept of responsibility at the territorial and regional level. So this is what Territoria tries to do, the project, and uh, the specific objectives of the project is to bring a responsible research and innovation at the forefront of, of the debate for developing local and regional research and innovation capacities and help territorial research and innovation systems to participate in ongoing transformation, transformations. Uh, we want to develop a territorial responsible research and innovation framework, which battles deterritorialization deter and fosters territorial, territorial making. Uh, we recognize that the borders of territories are uh, flux and are being broken down by uh, the forces of uh, uh, globalization, uh, mobility, and everything, and we want uh, to use responsible sense innovation as a framework of 
reinstituted reinstituting territorialization. We want to use also responsible research innovation as a springboard for broadening the number of stakeholders involved in the smart specialization strategy. So to address the criticism that I, I, I talked uh, in the previous uh, slide, uh, and in more, more general to embed the responsible research innovation principles in the regional uh, research uh, and innovation plan, planning processes. Uh, and doing this, we want to develop local and regional uh, research innovation capacities and introduce measurable changes and institutional changes in the ecosystems of five territories which act as the experiments or case studies, uh, let's say, uh, of this project. Uh, before going to, to talk about the five experiments, uh, I want to talk about how we view that responsible research and innovation can facilitate inclusiveness and responsiveness in the uh, smart specialization strategy uh, process. Uh, first of all, uh, we have the keys, of course. And uh, if we look at the RRI keys, uh, you, we can see that uh, the keys can facilitate uh, the inclusive and responsiveness in smart specialization in many ways. So open access and open science can facilitate open data and open innovation in a given region. Uh, ethics and gender equality uh, can uh, make sure that all available human capacities potential is realized and that citizens trust is gained uh, based on the, on the principles of ethics and gender equality. Uh, public engagement and science education can help multiplying the research and innovation capacity of a region uh, by introducing citizen science and also by uh, introducing uh, science in education and uh, this will can increase the capacity and RRI governance can lead to increased citizens engagement in the whole process. At the same time, uh, if we look at the RRI dimensions, anticipation, reflexivity, inclusiveness and responsiveness, we can see that all this can uh, enhance the smart specialization process. So with anticipation, we can go beyond the conventional business as usual approaches uh, by anticipating future development opportunities. With reflexivity, reflexivity uh, we can uh, help local entrepreneurial and scientific actors to better understand their own needs, aspirations, and limits, and also to understand what the society needs and how it can be best served. Uh, with inclusiveness, we can include local capacities, entrepreneurial, scientific, societal, in the whole cycle of uh, smart specialization strategy. And with responsiveness, uh, we have all economic, environmental, or societal opportunities and risks involved in new technologies better understood and managed in a way that is more socially efficient. So this is, uh, these are the concepts that we have to work with and these are the five territories uh, that uh, co-creation experiments are happening right now. Uh, the project is at the phase where we're finishing the co-design co of the experiments and we are starting next month uh, to actually do the experiments to embed uh, uh, changes, institutional changes in ecosystems in five, uh, five regions. And these regions are the region of Central Macedonia here in, in Greece, where we're focusing on gender equality in the regional uh, re research innovation system. Emilia Romagna in Italy, where responsible research innovation and science education uh, is included uh, in the smart specialization uh, process by uh, engaging uh, the social, social stakeholders uh, in this. Uh, the Gabropo municipality in northern Bulgaria. Uh, where we're trying to build a municipality public engagement plan again for influencing the smart specialization strategy development. Uh, the region of Northeast Romania, uh, with its capital in, in Iasi, uh, Romania, where we're doing a consultative instrument to identify and prioritize needs of innovation and the platform for innovation brokerage between local population, society, innovators, and facilitators. And uh, the municipality of Drottelang in Norway, where we're employing uh, responsible research innovation 
in literalizing university education and uh, bringing closer, especially populated, populated territories uh, with urban uh, research and innovation uh, facilities. So these are the five experiments. And in this, uh, we, what we will try to do, the teams that are going to work in these uh, five experiments, is uh, to uh, promote institutional changes in the actors, uh, research innovation actors in the ecosystems of these five territories, uh, which will lead uh, in the transformation of these uh, ecosystems and the transformation of the territory uh, eventually. <clears throat> so as I said, the phase that we are uh, right now uh, is that we have, uh, we're finishing uh, the design of the experiments and we're starting to do the experiments. So I'm going to talk about expected institutional changes uh, that we expect to see in the next, uh, let's say, 18 months uh, in each one of these uh, regions. So uh, the region of Central Macedonia here in Greece, this is the region Uh, I think I lost connection I, for a moment. Yes, Nikos, uh, for a moment we lost you. Uh, could you please please go back one slide? Yes, I, I will. I will let me let me share my screen again because I think. Yes, thank you. Sharing also. Now, can you see the screen again? Yes. Yes, you can see. It. Okay, but I cannot move it. Okay, so what I was saying is that uh, we expect to introduce some uh, institutional changes at uh, local actors in each one of the territories, which will lead in transformation changes, hopefully at the, at the whole regional uh, research innovation ecosystem and the region itself. And I, I don't know if you've heard that, uh, I said that we are starting now the experiments, we finished the period where the experiments were uh, uh, designed, co-designed uh, with the participation of actors from each uh, territory. And we, I'm going to talk now about the expected institutional changes out of these experiments, what we expect to, to see, uh, not actual institutional changes because most of them haven't happened yet. Uh, so for the region of Central Macedonia, which is a, a, a region in northern Greece with the capital of Thessaloniki, uh, we try to develop a gender equality uh, confidence structures and mechanisms, uh, for example, gender equality plans, gender equality committees, uh, gender neutral, neutral language protocols, work life balance structures, and so on, uh, with the participation of various uh, actors. Uh, for the moment, we have established, and this is the first institutional change, uh, the regional authority of uh, the region of Southern Macedonia has established a gender equality committee uh, a couple of months ago as a direct result of the project. Uh, we're also trying to uh, put together a quadruple helix action group on uh, research and innovation, gender and social inclusion. Uh, and uh, this is going to be led by the regional of Central Macedonia, the di Directorate for Innovation and Entrepreneurship in there. And uh, we're trying to involve the quadruple helix actors in infusing responsible research and innovation principles uh, in the upcoming regional uh, smart specialization strategy. So the discussion about the smart specialization strategy is already underway uh, in our region, in this region. Well, I come to this region, so that's what I'm saying, our region. And we want to suggest new, new monitoring procedures and indicators for regional institutions that include also uh, aspects of uh, gender equality. So this is what we expect to see uh, in the region of Central Macedonia. In Emilia, Romania, uh, again, we're focusing on the smart specialization uh, process and we try to have the regional uh, research and innovation actors uh, engage in new forms of cooperation with stakeholders and civil society in order to uh, have a more participatory smart specialization process. Uh, more particularly, we try to engage uh, technical schools and non-formal training institutions related to citizen science 
uh, EU training po policies within this uh, participatory smart specialization strategy, uh, and a new public engagement related identity for territorial uh, research innovation organizations addressing social issues and local needs. Uh, the, again, like in the case of uh, Central Macedonia, the regional body which is in charge of regional operational programs uh, that are being influenced by the smart specialization strategy uh, will uh, try to abide by the new uh, research, uh, uh, responsible research innovation policy guidelines that will be produced by, by the project. In the uh, Kaprovo municipality, uh, the municipality is uh, right now uh, producing its own policy for smart specialization and it's trying to have the key quadruple helix regional actor to become a members of a group that they call Economy, Innovation, and Human Capital uh, to introduce in the industry and industrial zones a Green Deal uh, and new projects between institu educational institutions and local businesses uh, addressing also aspects of uh, responsible research innovation and development of a transparent decision-making process in governance actors for considering the needs of local community uh, as regards the uh, uh, smart specialization uh, process. Uh, in the region of uh, North uh, East Romania, what we're trying to do is to involve local uh, organization in a platform for innovation brokerage between local population innovation and facilitators. Uh, the region is a, is a big region in Romania. Uh, there are a lot of uh, rural areas uh, that we try to bring uh, into a discussion about how to better uh, uh, have a research innovation process projects. Uh, it's also related to smart specialization and uh, the regional authority there is trying and together with the regional development agency uh, to produce local development strategies and to evolve actors on targeted micro regions, local action, or local action groups on two specific regions on Dorna Basin and uh, Cechlau, if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, so again, this, this is trying to influence the smart specialization priorities uh, towards agro-food sector and uh, safe, safe food production, which are very important uh, for this region. The last one is a region in the north of uh, Norway, in Trodelag, uh, where uh, in two particular uh, areas that are far uh, away from, the, from major cities and uh, rural areas in Roros and uh, Nam, Nam Talen, uh, we're trying to establish new, me new mechanisms for recruiting university graduates to temporarily work with this uh, region and become conduit conduits for knowledge exchange between university, the university NTNU, and Trodelag, and new policies to be adopted by actors in Trodelag that will facilitate a permanent dialogue uh, between local businesses, especially those that are in local business parks in the region and the university in order to facilitate uh, uh, new endeavors in, in research and innovation. Uh, and also, uh, we try to make an institutionalized collaboration between all the actors uh, in order to uh, infuse all these principles in a new path for development of a smart specialization strategy, which would be the first uh, for the region. So, this is a very quick picture, let's say, of, uh, of what we expect. Uh, happen in the next uh, 18 months. Some institutional changes have been already underway, as I told you about the, uh, the new uh, gender equality committee established in, uh, in Central Macedonia, and some will be realized in, in, the, in the next months. Of course, it is very important that, that all this uh, uh, take into account the uh, special provisions for sustainability, as we discussed uh, also in the morning. And uh, hopefully in a couple of years or 18 months, we'll be able to present more concrete uh, uh, results from this project. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. You can see more uh, details in our uh, website, territorialproject.eu. And back to the role, to my role as coordinator of this, of this session. I would like to ask you to make some comments or questions, both Lisa and myself, both presentations. So please write in the chat or 
uh, yeah, let me stop sharing. Yes, or, or just take the floor. Let's see, I have something in the chat. From Claudia Coronel. Mm. Yes, can you provide some more? I think that's a question for me. Um, expected institutional changes in the firing experiments. Can you provide some more info about the modality of activation of the territorial actors? Uh, well, it's, it's very different uh, for uh, in, in each one of the experiments. Uh, I can talk about our own here in, uh, in Central Macedonia. Uh, what we are doing is uh, on, on two, two levels, let's say. One level is uh, we try to form some working groups uh, that will work on several aspects of the gender equality uh, uh, LRIQ, let's say. So uh, there will be uh, a working group that will work mostly uh, on the issue of uh, work uh, and uh, life balance uh, as a major problem uh, regarding gender equality in research and innovation. We have another group that uh, will work uh, uh, on uh, gender uh, neutral language uh, in research and innovation and so on and so on. And these groups are going to be coordinated by us and the region of Central Macedonia and produce some guidelines and uh, possibly uh, policy recommendations for all the actors uh, in the region. Uh, the second uh, aspect is working closely uh, with the group that is preparing the smart specialization strategy in the uh, in the region and trying to promote uh, public engagement and societal uh, participation more closely to the smart specialization strategy. So in other uh, territories, uh, there are different uh, tools. For example, in uh, in uh, Romania, uh, there are trying to be the platform that we have also a, an internet presence uh, where so society, local actors, universities, innovators, and so on will cooperate in order to uh, produce new ideas, let's say. So there are, there are different, uh, different modalities. Uh, so the floor is open. We have 27 people here. Please ask. Yes, I uh, have a question also for uh, from uh, Elmarie Forsberg uh, about uh, Trodelang. Uh, now, in Trodelang, wh wh what, they, what they are trying to do is to involve the local communities that are really far away from Trodelang uh, in order to be more connected to the research and innovation actors, mainly the university or other uh, research laboratories, uh, and they are using students in order to facilitate this uh, dialogue, let's say. So students are, 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 as far as I understand, students are going to do small projects in these rural communities and engage in a dialogue with the society there so that from these projects, bigger projects or, and bigger uh, uh, innovations can come and the university and all the other uh, research innovation actors that are based in Trotelac we have a, an easier access to the needs and, and hopes and, and objectives of the rural communities. Any other questions? We still have some time. Haro. Okay, we have a question from Haro. Let me. Uh, we can you read the question, Nikos, please, because yes, it will be recorded. Uh, okay. Yes, I'm reading the question. So, uh, Lisa you. and Nikos, you also address the obstacles such as lack of interest at management level uh, at research and innovation funding and performing organization. But it is not just lack of interest, but rather other interests. So the question is how to connect to the other interests. Have you seen good examples of this? Other interests is uh, highlighted. Let's say. Do you want to go first? Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Um, 
Yeah, you're quite right. It's not just uh, it's not just a lack of interest or a lack of motivation, um, but it's of course. This is, a, this is an area that's filled with competing institutional logic, as Ellen Marie also mentioned uh, this morning. So, so it's, um, it's of course has to do with uh, competition uh, also. And hmm, I don't know if I've seen any good examples of, of connecting uh, to other interests, but, but we're at least very, very much discussing in the Grace Project right now is how to, um, um, how to use RRI as a strategic uh, instrument also, how to sort of uh, transplant it into something that will also position, for instance, universities or, or funding institutions in, in a more broad landscape. So that would be to, to maybe con connect it to, to strategic interests uh, as well. So, so we're discussing how that's done because that's not a simple procedure and, and I don't know if I have a very good answer to that, but, but, it's, but it's, um, it's certainly a, uh, a concern and something that we're trying to address in different ways. But I'm not sure that I have necessarily seen sort of um, diverging interests. It's not, I, I don't think we see um, examples of organizations where, for instance, management have uh, an opposition towards uh, particular RRI keys, as I would actually have otherwise expected. I don't. I don't think we see that because there is a. It's the RRI program or the RRI concept is also very much sort of a normative, um, as I said, sort of a change uh, drive that's very sort of uh, present in the at least the European debate. Uh, so I don't think we're seeing examples of organizations where we have a counter norm in a way, but, but it's, it's, there's sure sort of competition for, for interest and competition for resources uh, within the organizations. And, and what we're at least trying to do, as I said, is that we're trying to connect them in a strategic way so that the organizations can leverage this in a way and use it to say, okay, so if we do this, we'll actually be at the forefront and we'll actually be the spearheads in a, a uh, development that's inevitable in a way. So, so I, I think that's probably my best answer to that question. I don't know, Nikos, if you have other experiences. Yes, well, it's, it's a very good question, Harold. Thank you very much. And uh, indeed, it's, uh, it's, it's very important. I have to say that for the moment, uh, we haven't seen examples of, of, of conflicting interests. Uh, we have seen, and uh, it's, it's natural that we see obstacles in terms of, as I said, business as usual, uh, things that uh, people don't believe will, will change, uh, things like that. I mean, reluctance in this way, uh, but not uh, as, as expressed as, 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 as other interests, let's say. Uh, for the moment, uh, I mean, the, the, the experience from uh, the experiments and the, the co-design we have is that there is there is enthusiasm and there is some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, adherence to common principles. Uh, but I would expect to see more, more conflicts and more uh, objections in, in, the, in the actual implementation. Because for the moment, in, in all five experiments, I think there is enthusiasm, there is a commitment, uh, but we're still in the beginning. Uh, okay. There's still some time. I, I, I just wanted to ask, since uh, we have some time, uh, because, uh, of course, I participate in both projects, but uh, uh, not so much uh, in, in Grace. I, 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 I wanted to, to follow up on what I said before. I mean, do you see a, very, a big difference uh, between uh, implementing graphic actions in the research performing and then the research funding organizations? Since in Grace, we have both. Yes. Yes, we do have both. And yes, there is a difference. Um, I think there is um, the research funding. This will be very sort of anecdotal in a way because we are, we are as you know, in the middle of, of, uh, of the process. But, but it seems that there are, um, there are big differences, first of all, in the sort of um, the, um, in the initial sort of state and capacity of RRI in the organization. So where the funding organizations 
they kind of uh, seem to struggle a little bit to find their place in the RRI uh, uh, setting, if we can call it that. So, so they, um, they need to make more of an effort to translate RRI into something that makes sense for their particular organization. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think it's extremely important to have them uh, because they can actually, they can actually function as spearheads and they are the, they are the ones that can actually set sort of, sort of um, some of these uh, normative drivers in motion that we're already seeing. So if they actually ask their, their, um, uh, what is that called? The, the ones that they fund to, uh, to have uh, RRI as a, as a focus area in the projects, then that will set some, some things in motion at, at other levels. So it's extremely important to have that. But the RRI concept is not always as uh, directed towards funding organizations. So I think there is a, it seems that there is a, there is a lot of need for what within my field we call uh, organizational translation, that we need to, to, they need to adapt the RRI concept to fit uh, funding organizations more than, than we need to do in, in research performing organizations, because some of these, the keys are more um, research performing oriented in a way. So yes, there is a, there is a big difference, but I think it's, it, it's extremely important that we keep discussing how, how we can fit it more, more neatly to, uh, to funding organizations also. So any other question? You can, you can take the floor also. If you, if you want. Okay. If there isn't any other question, I would like to, to thank you very much. And please follow the Grace and Territoria project uh, through our social media, and uh, we're going to have more uh, uh, more presentations. And uh, or if you have any questions, of course, you can just write to us, to me and Lisa, or to everybody that uh, are involved in the project. So we will be happy to you know, to follow up. Okay, the next session is in uh, 20 minutes, actually and uh, hope to see you all there.